Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When Clark Kent and young Jimmy Olsen flew west, they were met at the Lost Valley Airport by their old friend, Tumbleweed Jones. Tumbleweed, together with most of the ranchers in the locality, had struck oil on a small parcel of grazing range given him by Comanche Joe. But he had also run into trouble. Abner Cheney, president of the local bank, owned the only pipeline and railroad spur capable of carrying crude oil to the refinery. In order to get high prices for transportation, he had organized an association, threatening anyone who refused to join up. But Tumbleweed Jones would have none of the association and bought three of his own tank trucks. All this Kent and Jimmy learned as they drove to Tumbleweed's oil field on a buckboard. As they approached it, shots rang out. Tumbleweed sent the horses into a mad gallop, and the buckboard swayed perilously as it raced over the dirt road. Listen. I can see a tank truck from here, Tumbleweed. Park near that big shed. They're red, aren't they? Yep, that's them. But what are all the hands crowding around him for? What was that shooting? Well, maybe they're just welcoming us in typical Western fashion. No, I didn't let on to nobody who was coming. Something's went wrong with them trucks. Get up, Danny. Get up, John. Come on. What could possibly have happened to the trucks, Tumbleweed? I don't know, but we'll find out soon enough. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Great, Scott, look. Someone shot bullet holes in the sides of the trucks. They're spouting oil. It's all over the ground. Consign it. Some ornery cayuse is going to pay for this. Come on, Miss Kent. Okay, come on, Jimmy. Okay, he done it, Tumbleweed. He done it. Who shot them trucks up, Buck? Oh, we don't know. They was all loaded, waiting for you to give the order to start for the refinery when a bunch of hombres come racing by an automobile and gunned them with them five-shot high-powered rifles. Low down, sneaking weasels. Recognize any of them? Nary a one. They drove past them trucks like greased lightning and filled them full of bullet holes. Lucky nobody stopped late. Sure was flying. Come on, Mr. Kent. I reckon this needs some looking into. Okay, careful we step, Jimmy. There's oil all over the ground. I see it. Gosh, you're mighty. And tanks sure have got holes in them. One, two, three, four, five in this one. Six in that one. Only four in the one in the right tumbleweed. Well, that's enough. Now, what two-footed rattler could have been behind this business? Well, whoever it was, it was someone who knew these trucks were full of oil, ready to leave. I can't figure that out. I only told one fellow about it. Larson, my oil broker. And that was less than a half hour ago, back in town. What puzzles me is why did they take a chance on shooting them up in broad daylight? The trucks just got here this morning. Well, you're lucky it's only the trucks, Tumbleweed. They might have set fire to the whole field. Lucky, huh? Well, maybe. What are you going to do now, Tumbleweed? How are you going to deliver that oil like you promised? We'll figure it out somehow. Now, quiet, boys. Be quiet over there. Pipe down. Boys, first off, I want you to meet some old friends of mine. This fellow here is Clark Kent. He's a reporter on a big newspaper back east. Hi, Hello, Hello, everybody. And this here lad is Jimmy Olsen. The Comanche tribe gave him an Indian name last time he was out here. They called him Laughing Squirrel. He works on Mr. Kent's paper. Hello. Now, Mr. Kent and Jimmy are both paying me a little visit. And I want all you hombres to understand they got the run of the place, like they own it. You savvy? All right, boys. Now, listen. Yep. Buck here tells me that nobody's seen the Cayuses who shot up the tank cars. Now, that's too bad. Because if we knew who they was, we'd go get them and string them up front over. Yeah, 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 we'd bring them up. But we got to figure some way of fixing the trucks so we can deliver our oil boys. We just got it. Well, sure we got it, Tumbleweed, but how? How are we going to do it? Them trucks is all full of daylight. The only way you can make delivery is by using Cheney's pipeline. Well, yeah, nothing doing. I bought them trucks so I wouldn't have to use that crook's pipeline. And you know how I raised the money? Well, I borrowed it from Cheney's bank. Now, now, don't get no ideas that Abner Cheney just up and give me the money. No, sir. He lent it to me. And this land we're a standing on right here. And all the oil under it. That gets to belong to Cheney Lock, Stock, and Barrel if I can't pay him back. And I can't pay him back if we don't move this oil to the refinery and sell it. 
Savvy? Yeah. Well, boys, now you see how it is. Well, we're all with you, Tumbleweed, but how are we going to fix them things? Say, I've got an idea, Tumbleweed. Let's patch them. Patch them, Mr. Sure. Kent? Well, there ain't time to weld them holes if that's what you're thinking. No, no, no. I, I wasn't thinking of welding. I know something much simpler. Well, let's hear about it. Well, there's a large hatch on the top of each of those tanks, big enough for a man to climb into. Just hammer some wooden pegs through from the inside of the tank. That way they can't fall out. The pressure of the oil will keep them in. Hey, now that sounds like it kind of might work. We'll try it anyhow. Hey, boys, now y'all heard what Mr. Kent said to do. Yeah. You all start doing it. Get some saplings down off the hill and whittle them down. It's right. just after three now. We'll want to leave about 7.30 tonight when the moon comes up. You think you can finish it up in time, do you? I'll try. Okay. Limpy, Buck, and Frank, you go get the sapling. Right. Lemon Smokey here can work on the inside of the tank. Let's go, fellas. Right. Seven thirty on the nose, and we're all loaded up and ready to go. That yeah, sure was fast work, Tumbleweed. Yeah, the boys done a swell job fixing up the trucks the way you told them. I don't know what we'd have done, Mister Kent, if you hadn't thought up that idea—the wooden peg. Oh, it's nothing new. I just happen to know about it. Come in mighty handy. Well, we got a full freight. Say, where's Laughing Squirrel? Jimmy. Send him to bed right after dinner. He had a long day for a youngster. Yep, I reckon he did. Hey, Tumbleweed. <laughs> in bed, did you say? Uh, what's the idea, Jimmy? I thought I told you to turn in. Oh, gosh, Mr. Ken, I had to say goodbye to Tumbleweed. And I had to say goodnight to my pony, too. The one Tumbleweed gave me. You mean you've been clear over to the corral? Sure. All right, now, young man, you just turn yourself around and trot right on back to the bunkhouse. I want you in bed asleep by the time I get there, you understand? Oh, gee, Mr. Ken, don't get mad. I, I just wanted to say goodnight. And say, Tumbleweed, how about making me some fudge tomorrow? Now, Jimmy, that's a right smart idea. We'll have us a fudge party, ten pounds of it. And not only that, I'm going to take you up to see Balancing Rock. Balancing Rock? Well, what's that, Tumbleweed? Why, it's a tremendous rock, shaped just like an egg that stands on its point. Just wait till you see it. Oh, you must be kidding me. No, honest, I ain't, Jimmy. I got no time to tell you any more now. We got to get rolling. Y'all set, boys? Now, we're taking the Mesquite Canyon Road, boys. That's round by Balancing Rock. And there's a couple of pretty steep grades. So we'll run about 30 feet behind the truck in front in case we gotta stop short. And keep a sharp lookout. That's all. Go on! Gee, Tumbleweed's just the nicest cowboy in the whole West, don't Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. Well, come on now, you've got to get to bed. Oh, I'm not at all sleepy. I'll get sleepy soon enough. Come on. Say, Mr. Kent, huh? what do you suppose Balancing Rock is, anyway? Well, the sound of the name, I'd say it was a geological formation. An enormous stone that looks like it's balancing on one end. There are a lot of freaks of nature like that in the West, Jimmy. Mm, but a Balancing Rock. How did it get in just the right position so it doesn't topple over? Well, the Indians used to say that a race of giants lived out in this part of the country, and they set the rocks in strange positions to mark their trails. Actually, most strange rock formations are caused by water eating away the stone into a strange shape. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Ken. How can a soft thing like water eat away a rock? Well, now, did you ever take a belly flop when you dove into a swimming pool? Sure. Water felt pretty hard, didn't it? Well, sure, but... And you put a rock into a stream and let water wash over it and around it for millions of years, and that rock will wear down. The water will rub it away entirely. Oh, but balancing rock isn't at the bottom of a river, is it? Well, not now, Jimmy, but once was, probably stream cut its way around Balancing Rock, and as it sliced deeper and deeper into the earth, Balancing Rock was left high and dry, just as if it had been set down there by some giant hand. Oh, gosh. I never would have figured that out. Uh, maybe not, but it's simple once it's explained, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the house. Wait a minute while I switch on the light. There we are. Yeah. Now, get into your pajamas, young man. Then let's see how quickly you can get into that bunk. Say, Mr. Kent. Hmm? What is it? How long do you suppose it's going to take Tumbleweed to get to the refinery and back? Well, it's not far. I think he figured about four hours, Jimmy. Why? I mm, wonder if I'll be awake when he gets back. Awake? Not if I can help it, young man. Gee, I sure would like to hear all about that trip. Well, what if something happens? Suppose the same men who shot up the trucks today no, were... Now, just you relax, Jimmy. Nothing's going to happen. We'll have plenty of time to hear all about it in the morning. Oh, all right. Climb in, young man. That's it. Keep the covers on you. Yeah. You'll get pretty cold before morning. Say, Mr. Ken, I'm Hungry? Hungry? After that huge dinner you put away? Why, you can't be. But honest, I am. Uh, couldn't I get something to eat? A sandwich, maybe? Oh. All right, Jimmy. I'll, I'll try and get you something from the cookhouse, but frankly, I don't know where you're going to put it. Why don't you get out of bed? Okay. I'll be right back.
As Clark Kent starts across the yard, Buck Connors, Tumbleweed's foreman, slips into the cookhouse, gropes along the wall in the darkness until his outstretched hands touch the ancient party line telephone. Quickly, he rings it. Two shorts and a long. A moment's pause, and then a voice at the other end of the wire. Hello? Lacey? No. Buck Connors. Three no. trucks just started for Bear River. How come? You put 20 bullets in them. I ain't got time to explain. Now listen. They're taking the Mesquite Canyon Road past Balance and Rock. Get hold the boys pronto and fix it so them trucks don't get through. Harry, got it straight. Mesquite Canyon Road past Balance and Rock. So Buck Connors is in on the attempt to keep Tumbleweed from transporting his oil to the refinery. How does he plan to stop the tank trucks from reaching Bear River? Will Clark Kent, approaching the cookhouse, hear enough of the conversation to arouse his suspicions? Something exciting is bound to happen, so don't fail to hear the next episode. Tune in and listen with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature.